Hatred is a bad word. Hatred is a bad word. I should have re-edited that. Dislike. Steve, every time I say hatred, just put dislike over my head. Hey everyone, GM Jared here from Nothing Venture, Nothing Game. And I want to spend a moment talking to you about something that I think is really important for your next character that you're going to make. So stick around after this opening of whatever Steve puts up here and we'll jump into it. So as an eternal GM, I've come across a number of times when I found myself liking a character because of something the character, the player, brought to that character. And these are simple three things you can do to level up your character, to take whatever character you're playing right now and make it a very memorable character. So one of the characters that I, I remember the most that sticks out in my head has to be one of my players, Tina. Um, she made this character called Ruby and Ruby was a dwarf barbarian uh, we were playing in the playtest for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and Ruby was a dragon barbarian, right? So they she took the totem of the dragon, uh, and she really... It was her first time playing, and this character kind of came to life just as it did. And the reason why I'm getting into this is because it, it kind of goes into my three things. Ruby had a very low charisma stat uh dwarves in pathfinder second edition if you don't know have a negative to charisma it harkens back to three uh earlier editions so if you're listening to this and you're like ah, well i played dungeons and dragons fifth edition don't worry all of the my three recommendations are system agnostic so you can use them for anything you're playing numenaria uh vampire the masquerade anything you're playing they they really stick out so ruby's character had a really terrible stat of intel um uh, charisma but here's the thing, Ruby's character got into a number of times where she needed to use charisma, and although it was her dump stat, Ruby still played out, played it up. Um, she played this gruff, like very tough, barbarian esque character, and she played no games. Right? She was she played no games. Ruby didn't play games, but there was this one time where the bard in the group rolled a nat one. And then Ruby stepped up and was like, I can do this. And actually outrolled the bard uh, by leaps and bounds. I think she might have rolled like a 19 or a 20. But it just changed the course of the game. We called it battle dancing. It was, it was very funny. But the reason why I tell that story is because this character stuck out in my head. And it, it stuck to me to this day. And I, I really appreciated the character she brought forward. Um and that kind of leads into my point. So it's just three things to make your character, your next PC, very memorable. So the first thing is have a favorite stat. Now, the stat doesn't have to be your best stat, and it doesn't have to be your worst stat. It could just be a stat you're using, right? So in my case, Ruby had a bad charisma. But like, let's say you have a low wisdom. Let's say you're playing a low wisdom based character or a character that shouldn't have wisdom, right? You can lean into that so your character is very gullible and just kind of believes things. And that makes your character very memorable. Everyone will kind of remember that character for being very gullible. You know, like, oh, if you look up in the dic dictionary the word gu gullible, you'll see a picture of yourself and the character will be like, oh man, I need to see a dictionary. I'm famous, guys. And, and you know, that's also not low intelligence right like there is a difference between those two stats um but again like i said system agnostic if if you're playing a game that has uh i know in vampire when i played many moons ago because i'm an old man uh drive was a stat and my character never had drive uh never took any drives but for some reason my character was always driving and to this day my friends and, and me uh we still joke about how terrible of a driver i was and then when we play games online, uh, like Halo or Borderlands, and we I hop into the Warthog, and I'm driver, and everyone's like, oh, man, there goes Jared driving again, and it's just a joke. So, again, pick a stat um, that you kind of lean into besides your main stat. This Obviously, if you want to be the strong character and have a high-strength character, that's fine. You can lean into that, and that actually makes your character a little bit more memorable. But 
if you're playing the barbarian with a high strength and you're just like me strong, ah, everyone kind of glazes that over because they've seen that a number of times. But if all of a sudden you're playing a gnome with a high strength, right? So you're playing a very small character, the high strength, um, you can have these really cool interactions. So pick a stat that you kind of want to lean into and really you can use that for your role play. And all of these are really role play options. Um, now the next one, uh, is going to have to be, have a thing. And I know that's very awkward to say, have a thing. Uh, and by that, I mean, make your character have an interesting character hobby or something they love. Maybe, um, they, uh, they love to draw and they have a, a, a book of drawings that they keep with them. And, and, you know, maybe you're, you're sailing and the book gets thrown over and they get stolen by it. And then one of your other characters can, um, give them an art book. Maybe they go out and buy it. Actually, that reminds me of a story. So quick story. Uh, one of my players, so I'm, I get to run every, every Sunday. I get to play with, uh, a number of players on the dead Aussie gamer, uh, channel on Twitch. I get to run Rise of the Rune Lords, and it's really fun. And we had these two characters, Crut and Cassandra. Crut was a barbarian, lizard folk barbarian, big, big lizard man. Uh, very Crut smash. And Cassandra was playing an oracle of bones, and she wilted. Like, that was her curse. She would, like, um, wilt away. And she would constantly put perfume on, and one day we were playing and her character lost her perfume in the fight because she used it to draw the draw it like they were getting attacked by giant bees right so she used the perfume the the perfume she was wearing was very floral so i was like oh the bees are attracted to the floral scent so she grabbed the the um the perfume she was wearing and basically put it in a sling and like pew, launched it into the, into space at that point. She shot it away so the party could get away. And she was kind of sad. She was like, oh, man, I don't want people to know. And her character was like, I don't want people to know that I am Bones because necromancy. Everyone looks down on necromancy. And Crut went out and bought her perfume. Actually spent a lot of money, all most of his gold, and bought her perfume. Nothing. It was just a friend being a friend, and it was beautiful. And they had this very heartfelt moment. And to, like in the campaign, she the character constantly remembered it. Even the player remembered it, and it was really beautiful. It was a very like heartwarming moment for like these two characters. So have a thing. You know, hers was perfume. You can have a character who maybe smokes different types of tobacco, and every time they go to uh, a different land, they are looking for a tobacco or a new flavor of tobacco from that area. And it also gives your DM something to put in. Um, in the campaign. So I know, you know, let's say Trevor, uh, his character, uh, smokes different types of tobacco. And I know that as the eternal GM. So I'm GMing their campaign and you know what, they go into a store and, Oh, look at that. This store actually sells a number of different tobaccos of different variety types. They don't have to be magical. And that's the thing that a lot of people think when you put items in this campaign, you have to make them magical because that's the only time players remember. But remember if your character, if this is their thing, it will be important to the character and then you can role play that a little bit more so it doesn't have to be magical. And then as the GM, I can put that in and you'll be like, oh, wow, that's really cool. They remembered my character. Everyone knows my character likes this one thing. So they all want me to have it. And also it gives me as the GM or, or you as the GM, if you're listening to this, the opportunity to add those things into treasure hoards or, or something, you know, maybe they're, uh, Maybe, uh, and it can also even lead to a character uh, flaw. Maybe they have the low wisdom, right, from that favorable stat, uh, low wisdom, and but they, they love tobacco. So now they're sneaking into the uh, the king's, um, you know, the king's uh, court, and they're, like, sneaking around, and all of a sudden, that player is like, oh, I smell that, that, that strange and rich tobacco for that the king uses in their pipes and I'm, I'm going to try and steal it and everyone's like don't don't steal and they're like no, no 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 i'm going to steal it i can do this guys 
and then they you know that becomes like its own side thing and that that can even lead to fun and remember these things are to make memorable pcs uh and memorable moments and that's what people remember no one remembers and you'll hear this a million times no one remembers oh man do you remember when i rolled that nat 20 to row the boat no what they remember is the story that led up oh remember when it was like storming and i was rowing that boat and we needed to catch the the sinking island to get the crystal and oh man yeah that was epic blah, blah, blah. you know and that's what people will remember it's the stories that you make it's not the stats and stuff like that they they remember the character interactions and that's really the key here is to make those character interactions really really memorable so first thing we have pick a stat that you might want to lean into it can be your main stat but i always like to suggest picking a stat that isn't your main stat maybe even your weaker stat uh secondly have a thing i know that's very open-ended but have a thing your character does or collects um they smoke different types of tobacco they're an artist so they're always looking out for new types of you know painting tools uh so then lastly the third thing that i suggest as the eternal gm is have a small dislike and by that i mean um, we all know like, oh, the evil necromancer killed my family and now I seek vengeance because I am the knight. I am Batman. No, like everyone knows that. That that becomes a trope. You don't need that. What I mean is by a small dislike is, is not like, oh, I dislike, like, oh, my character has a fear of spiders, right? Like I know in fifth edition, when you make a character, they have like flaws and stuff like that. Um, this can kind of be like underneath the flaw section. So you could like, you know, flaw subsection one. It's like a small thing they dislike, or maybe your character dislikes the smell of oranges. Maybe they, they're allergic to oranges. Maybe they get a tummy ache from eating too many oranges. Um, you know, they just like, dislike the smell of oranges and then that could be something for the gm to even play into your story uh maybe that generous benefactor is secretly a cultist but no one realized it because the, the benefactor was awesome but the benefactor was always eating oranges and your character never really liked them because of that and all of a sudden when the benefactor turns out to be in an evil cult everyone's like oh man who would have guessed they were a bad guy but you could be like, I did, only bad guys eat oranges. And then that's a joke, and everyone has that joke. Um, you know, and then that could be something for you to play in, or actually even role play. You know, I dislike oranges, and we're stuck on a boat uh, shipping oranges. You know, in uh, what was in The Hobbit in, on, in the movie, where Bard brings them to um, the, uh, the town, and they all have to hop into the, the barrels of fish to get in you know maybe in that that perspective uh you know it's all oranges they you have to get into a carton full of oranges uh you know that would be interesting the key here is to make memorable choices and these are the three that i really feel stick out to me as a gm when playing with players they will all whenever i remember a player character even like when i go to conventions you know, I really don't expect this to be done at conventions. Like when you sit down to a game that's going to happen, it's going to be over in four hours. Not really, but maybe in your next section, uh, when you go to your friend's house and you want to in introduce a new aspect to your character, these can be it. Like you could turn around and be like, Bob, my, my, you know, dragonborn paladin dislikes, you know, the smell of, I don't know, pick something silly. Uh, raspberries they 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 dis turns out dragonborn don't like raspberries or this one just dislikes raspberries has a bad memory of eating it you know got got tummy ache from eating too many raspberries or dislikes uh dogs i i, I know a lot of people that's a weird thing to say but i know a lot of people don't like all animals so maybe they dislike dogs or they dislike birds and not a big bird person and that could just be something that you inter start to weave into your game you know then there's aracocras that show up and uh and you know they show up and, and your character has this interaction it's like they're not like and remember this isn't hatred this is just like really just like they're like oh man i don't really um uh, want to talk fine whatever you know as a it's just something for you to play into. So remember the three things, real simple. And then my suggestion is when doing this, don't 
don't do all three. Do one or two. All three, it, it, it becomes very heavy. And then all of a sudden, now you're kind of taking away from everyone else. Because all of a sudden, your character dislikes chocolate, um, you know, likes to wear perfume, and is not very wise. Suddenly, this this is a a whole different thing, and you could and and it could become a bit overwhelming. So my suggestion is maybe one or two of these three options for you to make a memorable PC, and that that's the key here is to make your character memorable, but also everyone else should have those moments too. This isn't for you to take screen, you know, time away from everyone else. This is for you to share the spotlight, but also for you. To have those moments with everyone to bring laughter to bring joy into your campaign so to reiterate three things one pick a stat that you want to lean on not your main stat not the stat that you're using the most but maybe a substitute stat a a, a stat that you haven't really uh increased um so it could be a weaker stat. And then that that one is a cool option because it gives you time to role play with that weaker stat. And then it can show increase why you might want to increase that stat. Or you can lean into the, the, the your main stat, but that one's a little harder to role play. Two, have a thing. My character likes to collect different perfumes. My character smokes different types of tobacco. That could be a thing. Uh, and then last but not least is have a dislike. Hatred's a bad word. Hatred is a bad word. I should have re-edited that dislike steve every time i say hatred just put dislike over my head have a dislike uh dislike chocolate i uh, dislike the smell of oranges i'm not a big fan of flowery perfume the color red you know just something like that and if you think about it all your favorite characters have something like this it's just the small things that really bring your character to life so i hope in your next game you try to build a character using these, you know, besides the normal ways you build characters, you know, like I said, for fifth edition, you have those, you know, your flaws and your ideals and bonds. Um, but maybe add these to that, you know, uh, and see how it works out. I would love to hear how you played. Maybe tell me about one of your favorite characters, or if you were an internal GM like myself, tell me about a character that stuck out and what was the thing that helped them stick out? Because remember, this is a learning process and we're all here to make ourselves better and to make each other better. So with that being said, if you could do me a solid at the very end, I'm gonna just say this because I have to, because the algorithm, if you could like and subscribe, if you haven't, I would very much appreciate it myself and all of the members of nothing venture nothing game we appreciate that and you know we're here working hard to to make our hobby better for everyone and that's the goal so wherever you are today have a good day my friends bye